So I've been getting a lot of questions here lately about my heart condition, and a lot of you guys have been interested in an update as far as do I still have it? Is it something I still suffer from? And how does it affect me as a diver? Does it affect me even going diving, or has it ever affected me underwater? So in today's video, I'm gonna try to answer those questions, but I'm also gonna be talking about what's called a rapid neurological exam. And that's something that in the public safety field we do before every single dive. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a demonstration of how it can be conducted and how quickly it can be conducted so that you as a diver can make sure that you're safe before you get out there to do an operation. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now, if you are new to our channel, let me do a quick introduction. My name is Brian Stafford. I am co-owner of Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. I'm an instructor trainer with SSI and I specialize in public safety diving and underwater salvage. We run an underwater salvage crew here at our shop. We have multiple contracts in the area to do public safety diving for multiple different departments. And it's something that we're very good at, something that we've trained at for many years. It's something that we've operated and done for many years. And it's something that, as I stated before, we simply specialize in. Now, I also suffer from a, a heart condition called a PAC, which is a premature atrium contraction. And in short, all that means is, is the top two chambers of my heart, the atriums, they fire when they're not actually supposed to be firing. And it kind of feels like a flutter in my chest or a rapid heartbeat, something that we call a tachycardia where your heart goes just a wire for a few seconds and this is something that's very common a lot of people suffer from this it, not very many people actually die from it uh, however mine seem to be very severe when it happens to me i can feel it coming on several minutes prior to it happening and then of course if it's a bad attack it almost feels like somebody is just constantly punching me in the chest and sometimes it can even make me pass out um, and it's something i've suffered with for the last few or few two or three years um, and the doctors, even my cardiologist and even my local doctor have told me, hey, it's still not to the, to the point where we think you should really be concerned. Now, they both have suggested that I can go in and have an ablation done to, to fix the problem, but they don't think that it's really gonna be an issue for me, being that it's a very common occurrence for a lot of people. Now, all that being said, has this ever occurred to me when I've been underwater? And no, thankfully it's never occurred. It has been something that I've been very concerned with because we do extreme types of diving. We do more than recreational. We do technical diving where we're, you know, stay longer than we should or going deeper than we should. And and we do commercialized diving as well. And it's something that not only am I concerned with myself, it's something that I wanna be concerned with with my team as well. Now, all these things being said, there's one of the things that I always do on every salvage job or every public safety dive. And what is that? That is a five minute rapid neurological exam. This is something that we teach all students, say in the rescue diver course, we also teach them in the new public safety and rescue team diver courses from SSI. And there's a lot of agencies that do this type of exam. Uh, before you go out diving. But I wanna talk a little bit real quick before I show you the exam, why it's so important that you may wanna consider doing this before every single dive. Not just a public safety dive, not just a salvage dive. You might wanna consider it before you do tech diving, before you go out and make a cave dive, or even just a fun recreational dive. This is something that you can do when you're still in the hotel room or you're still at home. It doesn't have to be at the water's edge just when you're ready to jump in. You can do it at the beginning of each day so you know this is something i can do at the hotel my wife can perform it on me or my dad or any of my dive buddies can perform it on me and vice versa i can perform this test as well now in this video what i'm going to do is actually show you the exam in real time now i, I say real time it's actually going to be a little bit slower than the way that we actually conduct it in the real world simply put we want you guys to see each individual step so that you can understand what those steps are going over and i also want to make a, a claim here. It's not me doing this exam. I actually got a good friend of mine. He is Dr. Dan Murray from Dive Masters in San Antonio. And yes, he is a real doctor as well. He is going to be walking us through this exam to show you how easy it is to do to make sure you hit every single step on this exam. And once again, the exam is to make sure that you as the diver are going to be healthy enough and safe enough to go out and make that specific dive. So with that being said, let's jump into the exam and let Dr. Dan Murray show you exactly how it should be performed. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Murray. Uh, I'm residency trained in aerospace medicine. I'm here to talk about the rapid neuro assessment uh, that we do prior to a dive team going into the operation. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we can do a good head to toe assessment of all neuro and um, sensory functions. And so motor and sensory functions are what we want to cover. And so we want to have a good um, head to toe assessment that we can do very quickly to not delay the operation and get the diver into the to the water as quickly as possible. So starting right at the top, we touch the forehead on both sides and we sweep down to the chin. And what that's gonna tell us is about the three trigeminal nerve endings and how they, how the sensation is going. So what do you, does that feel normal on both sides? Yes. All right, so now I want them to close their eyes real tight and then open their eyes real wide, wrinkle their forehead. Good, all right, follow my finger to left and right up and down and then for convergence as they go as you go toward their pupils should constrict a little bit to tell you that they have normal pupillary function all right now i'm going to be looking over to the to the ears you should be able to rub it in your own ear and hear it and then rub on one side do you hear that yes okay and then on this side i'm going to not rub do you hear that Okay, so that's the right answer. That's to make sure that they're not just saying yes to every question. That's good, so can you hear this? Yes. All right, so now we have good hearing on both sides. All right, now you're gonna smile real big for me so that all the facial muscles are working. Stick your tongue out at me, wiggle it side to side, good. So all of the, all of the head and special senses are working. The thing that I haven't looked at is the visual acuity. So can you read my shirt? The thumbs drip. Okay. So now I've checked their visual acuity at least enough for them to be able to check their gauges and see that, all right? So now you're gonna shrug your shoulders. Don't let me push down. Arms like this. Don't let me pull out. Don't let me pull out. Push away, push, push away, push. Make sure that's equal on both sides. Give them two fingers, not three, because it hurts really bad if they do three, if you do three. So two fingers, they grab that. And I'm gonna cross my arms, because that helps me to, to feel the difference in pressure. So squeeze real hard, 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 hard. Good, all right. Pick this knee straight up, push down, pick this knee straight up, push down. That should be equal on both sides. Kick out, pull back, pull, 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 pull. All right, legs straight out, toes up toward you, toes that way, there you go. Don't let me push down. Good, push down like you're pushing on the gas. All right, now we have looked at everything from a motor standpoint and the special senses. Go ahead and stand up. Now I want to check, check balance and cerebellar function. So what you're gonna do is close your eyes, put your arms out and touch your nose. There you go. And the other side, touch your nose. Good, all right. Now you're standing there, I want you to go onto one leg and run your heel down your shin. All right, the other side, heel down your shin. Good. And then I want you to, to touch your fingertips just like that. So that's rapid alternating movement that they wanted us to test as well. All right. And then we just want to check other senses, right? So other sensations, does that feel normal on both sides? Yes. Does that feel normal on both sides? Yes. Feel normal on both sides? Yes. Good. And right, back in front? Yes. All right. So now we've just checked all the sensation that they want us to check. The other things that they want us to do is tell, tell whether they're alert and oriented times four. So what's your name? Tim. And where are you? Fort Lauderdale. Okay, and why are you here? Training. All right, and what time is it? 9.33. And the date? February 9th. All right, so now I know that they're alert and oriented times four. Um, I believe those are all our assessment. This is the assessment forms that you should be looking at. You wanna make sure that you review it. So alert and oriented, we've checked all of the, uh, the sight, the eye movements, the facial movements, the uh, head, uh, I did not ask you if you could swallow. So are you swallowing normally? Yes. All right. Um, I assessed their speech as we went through. Their speech was normal as they went through. Um, we went to, to the uh, face, chest, abdomen, arms, hands, legs, feet, back, arms, buttocks, and legs for all the sensation. And we did all the muscle, arms, hand grip, legs, and feet. Um, we checked the balance and coordination um, with the passing the Romberg test. Uh, so that is touching their nose and the rapid al alternating movements and then they're uh, sliding down their uh, heel to shin. Um, the blood pressure, pulse, and breathing rate. Um, so go ahead and have a seat. 
You want them to be in a seated position, you can just uh, take their pulse. If they have a normal uh, pulse at the wrist, this means that their mean arterial pressure is 90 or above, and that is really all the information that we need. We do want need to know if, if they're hypertensive, um, which would be pretty normal in this situation. The, the systolic pressure would be elevated because of anxiety and the operation and everything. And so, but the, the lower uh, number, the diastolic pressure should definitely be 80, uh, maximum of 90, but not above 100. Should be che checking their pulse and make sure that it is regular and strong, right? Uh, other than that, uh, making sure that the EMT, or if you're qualified to take the blood pressure, then you can go ahead and get the actual numbers. But knowing that in and of itself would be uh, adequate. The uh, thing that you wanna make sure is that it is regular. If it's not regular, or there's missing beats, or there are extra beats, any of those things, you need to tell them they can't do the operation today. Um, for the breathing rate, just holding their wrist, I can continue to, to watch their breathing rate. You don't necessarily want to tell them what you're doing because then they will change their breathing rate. A person that is breathing normally will breathe about once every five seconds or 12 times per minute. Um, if they are breathing more than that or they're taking really big deep breaths, they're sighing or they're yawning, uh, those things are indications of, of air hunger. So you may want to ask them more questions about what's going on and make those observations. All right. If there are anything abnormal from the vital signs standpoint, you should be sending them for further evaluation or they cannot do that up that day. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate you uh, being with SSI Public Safety Diver. So here you go guys, that is the five minute neurological exam or rapid neurological exam. We do this before every call out, we do it before every salvage dive, and it's something that can be performed at the beginning of the day or the beginning of your shift if you're a police officer, firefighter, EMT who does a lot of dive or diving for that specific department, maybe you're a public safety diver, you can do it at the beginning of your shift to make sure you are going to be safe and healthy enough to actually get out there and operate as a diver. Even our salvage crew here does it before every single dive as well. But guys, if you've got any questions on the five minute rapid neurological exam or on the new, say, PSD programs from SSI, drop me a comment down below and I wanna do a huge shout out to Dan. I actually met Dan back in February of this year at an instructor seminar where we learned about the new programs from SSI, the new public safety program, and the new rescue team diver program as well. And I got to train with Dan. We both trained as students, and then we trained as instructor students, and we both graduated, and now we're both out teaching the new program. So Dan, huge shout out to you. I appreciate you letting us film this, and I appreciate you going on here and showing everybody how quick and easy these, these exams can be done. But guys, go check out Dan at his shop. It's the Dive Masters down in San Antonio. I'll put all their information down below. Um, and something else I want to end with really quick, you know, make sure you're getting a medical done every single year. Anytime you go in for a checkup, print out a standard medical questionnaire, the same questionnaire that you have to fill out for every dive class, and take it to your doctor. It doesn't cost you any extra to have him put his, uh, you know, his signature on there saying that you're going to be safe to dive, and then upload it to your SSI profile. As a matter of fact, I'll put a PDF down for you as well where you can download that medical questionnaire and take it with you anytime you go. I know tomorrow morning, the reason I was making this video, I have a heart appointment tomorrow with my doctor and I'm going to be taking that medical questionnaire for him to fill out as well so I can upload it to my profile. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to everyone that's been asking about my heart condition and trying to keep up to date with me. I really appreciate it. I feel your thoughts and prayers there as well. But good news is I am healthy. I am safe. Yes, I still suffer from this, but it's not something that's really affected me or something that has stopped me from diving. But guys that's going to do it for today's video take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video